Hi guys, welcome. We're back again. Last time we, uh, well, the very first time we uh, we built our Q&A bot. The second time we actually looked on how to do some custom development, custom coding into your uh, into your chatbot. And today we're going to have a quick look on how to work with Azure DevOps and make sure that you have continuous integration and continuous deployment of the things that you're building. Because the one thing that we do not want to do is to press F5 and then have to do some manual steps to actually get it live. So what we're going to do today is we have a quick look on how you can make sure that using Azure DevOps release pipelines, you can actually have a process in place that takes care of all those things, meaning that the main goal is going to be to commit your stuff to your repo and then making sure that it gets deployed to Azure. We're four guys from Europe and well, by now it's our third webinar, so you'll probably know who we are. If you want to reach out, tweets can be sent to the uh, addresses below. And if you have any questions, just let us know. With that, Stefan, go ahead. Thanks. So if you, if you want to collaborate on your code base of your team members. Um, code which is only running on your machine won't, won't be sufficient. So what you could do with Azure DevOps is to create a repo for your code base uh, and basically uh, host your code there and do build and release pipelines from there. So what I've done here in my DevOps environment is I've created the build pipeline, which basically consists of a couple of tasks. Uh, first of all, does the NuGet installation of our files, of our NuGet packages, restores them, builds the solution then, which is coming from my local machine, does some testing if you wish, um, and does, a, does some um, publishing for the later release pipeline uh, in there. The release pipeline itself, is as simple as that. Um, you basically take the artifacts which have been published by the build pipeline, which is in this case just one artifact. Uh, you can connect uh, these artifacts to various stages, so you can have multiple Azure subscriptions uh, in there, and you can uh, basically uh, publish your code base to various Azure subscriptions at once, or you say you have a test or dev test and prod environment, and based on the build um, or the test uh, uh, results, you publish the code base to, to another Azure subscription or to another uh, Azure app service. Um, and per stage itself, you have at least one job with multiple tasks, which is in my case, um, if you basically start from scratch and you're starting with a, with a local deployment, and you uh, create your bot locally with Visual Studio, you want to actually, first of all, create an Azure resource group with the Azure CLI. After you've created the Azure resource group, you need to create the app service plan and your Azure app service in order to have a environment where you can publish your code into. And if you've done that, um, there's a the, the third task, which basically just takes that package which has been built by our build pipeline um, and publish this uh, package to the um, Azure App Service then, which actually cool. uh, makes your, makes your uh, code running in Azure then. So it's basically rather simple. If you have Visual Studio, you have set up the connection to your DevOps environment, um, and I have a local bot or an Azure bot up there. If I run that and say hi, the bot should shall actually respond with you you sent hi. Um, if I now change something in there and say you say you sent this, save it. Now as this as this code is on my machine, I need to commit it to DevOps. So I do a commit and I'll do a it oh, basically just commit should be sufficient. Let's see if the build pipeline already got triggered or not. Yeah, I should do a Git. push, I think. Yeah, push already. Yeah, Git. sorry. It push it master origin or is it origin master? Origin master, I guess. 
I always swap them. But you're using the new terminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's terminal. true. <laughs> so basically, the code has been pushed to our DevOps repo. We see build pipeline is triggered. There's Wait, a new while, build coming in. While this is building, can you show me one thing? How you get the dark mode on Azure DevOps? Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's an easy one. Theme. Ah, okay. On the right side. Theme, <laughs> and then you choose specific. dark. Yes, everything so, in dark mode. Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's see what our build pipeline does. So the job has been initialized. Right now it's in, it is uh, the, doing the nugget stuff. Um, and you, what, what's really cool about it is that you can actually see what the build pipeline is doing and what the commands are doing. If you face some errors, errors during your build, you can actually track those errors right within your Azure DevOps environment. So as you can see here, got a lot of things to do, which are pending. Could take a couple of seconds or minutes um, yeah, until the build is, is finished. So, and if you go back to the release pipeline, so the, the first time you create the uh, Azure uh, the resource group yeah. and then the web app, and so yeah. you, uh, for every release, you delete that one or you create a new one or? Well, basically, the... Um, the, the release pipeline isn't finished yet because as you can see, I have two stages. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And what I see right now is that I've connected the build to the wrong stage. So I would need to select this trigger and deselect that one because we don't want to run through this uh, create a uh, resource group and create app service. Ah, this is I just for the first one. Yeah, okay. But I can um, basically go directly to this deploy Azure app service uh, task. Um, and the only thing I didn't manage to, to get uh, working right now is on how to work with that inline script and do some some if statements in there because that's as you can see here pretty pretty um pretty basic yeah, yeah, yeah. Basic. so you need if you want to have multiple commands executed you need to have call in front of every command and there's no real script editing in there hmm. i you would have to upload the script somewhere and use that yeah. one okay. yeah well, yeah the, you, you always have that option to do it, like host the script somewhere else or host the script in, within your solution, get that script. And But you're using here the, the Azure CLI or the... Yeah. Okay. This is basically the Azure CLI for doing all those Azure stuff. Mm, cool. The... Yeah, that build will take a while probably. I will... yeah, it's... There we go. Building That's right now. See that? But I hope it takes the good stage, not the create stage. Otherwise, I will run into an error. Do you uh, does the release pipeline automatically start, or is it just like the build and then it's in the artifacts? And you need to start manually, or is it two option or three options after okay. release, after stage, or manual only? Okay. So you can always start your release pipeline with the latest builds manually, yeah. or you say after release. So let's see if anything. Yeah, release release Azure bot code Azure bot. Right now, it's doing update. the update code thingy. It's now running the stuff we did locally, but again, it's from Azure DevOps Correct. directly into Azure. And if we're yeah. lucky, if this runs through, our code change should be available within the WebChat emulator in, in the Azure portal. That's nice. That's uh, yeah, full, de full DevOps then. Yeah. Just change something, commit, push, good to go. Takes a while. Yeah, it takes so. Yeah, that's yeah. Because it's reaching out for an agent. You can always have your own agents in there to to um, build and release that stuff, to host all those things. Yeah, it's also it's, depending on how yeah how busy it is on the yeah. shared agents within within Azure, of course. 
for example, for our for our company, we are using a local machine as an agent. There you go. So we don't need to download the source code always. We don't need to download all the node versions because we know what's running on the machine. So it's very I faster am. when you have your oh, local God. machine. You have a sure yep. environment. And it worked. You sent your, this. this. All right. It's your Perfect. code change. That's nice. That's cool. Yeah, it's really looking good. You can all read that up in my blog. I've created a step-by-step -step tutorial for setting all that stuff up. Yeah, we will put the link into the video. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Normally you should see this link now. <laughs> yeah, when I'm ready, it's there. <laughs> All right, Api, you wanna close this off? Intro and close the call also. So, and that was it already. We had a look at making sure that we deployed everything automatically to your Azure environment. So basically setting up a release pipeline. And if you're not really into this video, you can check out this blog written by Stefan, and he basically uh, made a step-by-step -step guide that you can use to walk through building your own release pipeline and getting things deployed. What about next time? What are we going to do then? Well, uh, I'm thinking next time we should uh, update the Q&A maker. Yeah, well, let, let's, uh, let's have a look if we can use this release pipeline to automatically uh, update our Q&A maker database by triggers or whatever we want to use to see if we can have like a full CI CD experience for everything that we want to do with either code or our content that we are pushing. Sounds good. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. Until next okay. time. See, see you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.